Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we are doing a walkthrough video on multiplying fractions, sheet two. This is a worksheet from mathsalamanders.com. Make sure to check out the link in the description below. They have tons of other great resources just like this. I also have a playlist for their videos. But before we get into anything, we need to talk about what is multiplying fractions. And for that, we're going to start with number two. So number two is the problem two-fifths times one-half. I like to see a visual representation of this concept. And so to do that, I have this chocolate bar. It's, it's chocolate. It's got five parts to it. That's why this five is on the bottom. Say one, two, three, four, five. Five parts of the whole. And we only want two of those. So I need to select two of those that we are eating or breaking off or whatever whatever it is that we're doing with it. Okay, so I'm going to highlight two of these. All right. So those, those are my two-fifths, as you can see right there. And now I need to multiply it by one half. What does that mean? Well, I need to divide this in half. So I'm going to divide this chocolate bar in half the other way. That was a terrible line. Let me try that again. All right, so there we go. Okay, that looks, I need to lower it just a pinch. And that looks just about in the middle. Okay, so now I have it in half. And you can tell it's in half because if you were to draw, finish this out, see how we have half the chocolate bar vertically and then the other half, okay? So I have it drawn in half. And what I want to do is I want to shade in that entire half. So let me get, uh, I want to actually choose blue for this. So I'm going to shade in blue. Okay, and I have half of my vertical uh, long ways uh, chocolate bar. Well, vertical if you hold it up. Okay, so now, what is this representation? When we multiply in half, essentially what we're doing is we are looking for the overlap. Okay, so we multiply by one half, we're looking for the overlap of these two fractions. And you can see it is right in this region. Let me get a green one out, because blue and yellow make green. It is in this region only. Okay, now, how much of the fraction is this? That's the question at hand. So, first you'll notice when we divide it in half, we divide it into uh, smaller pieces. So, it wasn't just in fifths now. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces. How many of those pieces did we end up being on, or how many were highlighted when we had the overlap? One, two. So, we had two pieces out of a total of 10 chosen. Now, here's the interesting thing is you'll notice here that doesn't say 10. That's because it can be reduced. What you can do here is if you have 2 over 10, essentially, both of these are divisible by 2, both the top and bottom, the numerator and the denominator, and so that becomes 1 fifth. Now, why is it 1 fifth? Well, take a look at this box here. I'm going to see if I can get this. Okay, let's try to grab it. It might get a couple more things. Yep, way too many things. So here, I'm going to try this. I'm going to just go like this. Okay, so this is <laughs> one more time. This is roughly our piece that we have here. Oh, let me get this. There we go. Okay, so you can see this represents two tenths or one fifth. And how many of these do I have? I have one, two, three, four, and then if I flip this vertically, which I think I can do, five. See how I have five of these? Two tenths is the same thing as one fifth. I could flip this different ways, and it would represent one fifth of my fraction. That's why it's equivalent. It's an equivalent fraction. So this becomes one fifth. Now, how does it work with the multiplication? Well, what we're going to do here is we have two times one in the top and five times two in the bottom. So what really happens is this becomes two tenths, which we said reduces to one fifth. What I like about mass salamanders is it talks you through how to do that. So if we have eight thirds times three fifths, again, top times top, that's the rule, bottom times bottom. You're gonna multiply these two things just like that. Now what you see here is you see this process of being reduced. If you have a three multiplied in the top and a three multiplied in the bottom, you can cross those out. That's what's happening here in this example. The three is being crossed out, and really what, we're, what you're left with is eight fifths. Why does that work? Again, if we do eight times three, that's 24. And then three times five, that's 15. They have a common factor of three. So what you're doing is you're essentially getting rid of that three anyway. 
You're dividing both the top and bottom by three. You're getting rid of it, and you're left with eight fifths. That's how you reduce. Now, let's talk about how do we get into this problem or the rest of these problems. So for number one, again, our rule is top times top, bottom times bottom. I'll show you the most common mistake I see. Okay, so ignore this off to the right. Don't look at that right now. The most common mistake I see is one times eight in the top, you get eight, and then three times eight in the bottom, so that would be 24. That is incorrect. Eight is not in the denominator for this problem. If you see just a whole number like this, the first thing that you should do is make it into a fraction. We want to multiply the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator. So we need to have one times eight in the top, and in the bottom, we need to have three times one. One is in the denominator because eight divided by one is still equivalent to our original problem, which was just eight. So eight over one, eight. Eight over one, eight. You get it, okay? It's the same thing. So now we can multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. We get one times eight. That's just gonna be eight. Three times one, I wanna put this here. Three times one, and that's just three, and eight thirds is gonna be our final answer, okay? If some of these are hard to do visually like this, it requires a lot of work, but I just wanted to show you that pattern so you get the idea. Okay, so let's try to find some that we can reduce. Okay, so here it gets uh, mostly set up for us. We have five times three, okay, top times top, bottom times bottom, and if you wanna highlight it just to remember, okay, I would do that if you have it handy. If you don't, that's okay but we have 15 over eight, and it can't be reduced because notice how we don't have any matching numbers, okay? We have five and three in the top, two and four in the bottom, and none of those have common factors, so it's gonna stay 15 over eight as its most reduced form. Now, another thing I would do is anytime you see a whole number, I would just go ahead and put this over one. So now we have top times top, bottom times bottom. Is green my bottom? Yes, it is. So top times top, bottom times bottom, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, okay? And so here I would have seven times one in the bottom, uh, four times six in the top, that's 24 over seven. Notice how I don't have any common terms in the top or bottom, so therefore I can't cross any out and reduce it. So any of these that you see that have just a number, I would put this over one. That's gonna make it a lot easier for you to remember. Okay, so let's see if we can find it. Ah, let's go to number seven real quick. So Top times top, what's my bottom color? Green. <laughs> bottom times, top times top, bottom times bottom. Okay, so then that's gonna be my result there. This is gonna be my result there. And let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna show the multiplication first. So in this worksheet, you need to show the multiplication first. Then we have four times seven. Now you could go 36 over 28, but then they have common factors. Okay, they both have a common factor of four. You divide this by four, divide this by four, okay? Or you could recognize that if you have a four in the top and in the bottom, you can cross them out because that's essentially what you're doing with that divide by four. So we're gonna end up with nine over seven, okay? That's gonna be the simpler way to do it. Let's do one like nine where it's not so obvious. So we have bottom times bottom. Let me finish this out. Bottom times bottom, top times top, okay? And let's go ahead and do this one. So let me use my red. So I have eight times three. We're doing the expanded form first, 11 times two. Now you're probably thinking, oh, there's no number that's the same as in the top and the bottom. Well, let's see what happens. We're gonna get 22 over 24. They're both even numbers. So you know they have at least a factor of two that you could divide. So we can divide both the top and bottom by two and we would get 11 over 12. Now, let's see how this applies to crossing it out, canceling. Well, eight and two aren't the same number, but they have a common factor of two. So you can, let me change it to blue. You can cross this off, essentially divide it by two, and then you cross this off and divide it by two, and you're left with four. So we have 11 in the top times essentially one, but it's just 11. And then we have four times three in the bottom, 12. We get the same thing. Now, if that cross canceling is confusing you, just trust in multiplying it out and then reducing when you're done. Just know that it's gonna be a little bit more work than you would otherwise perform. Number 10, let's make this maybe one of our last ones. So we have top times top, bottom times bottom, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So we have 28, sorry, expanded form first. I need to follow my own instructions here. 15 times seven, notice how we have the same number in the top and bottom, 
We have a seven here, seven there, so we get four over 15. Okay, so that's probably the easiest way to do it, and that's all I have for this video today. Now, if you need any help on any of these other questions I did not cover, make sure to leave a comment. If you need help on another concept or another worksheet from MassSaleManders.com, make sure to also leave a comment asking specifically what you need. Either way, I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.